How's it going, Volat Hunters, and welcome back to another Borderlands 2 Legendary Weapons Guide. Today, we're going to be covering the legendary Torg rocket launcher known as the Nukem. Now, with this item being manufactured by the Torg company, it can only drop an explosive element and is a base game item, which means no DLCs are required to get this item. Now, the red text for this item reads the name dropper. And please note that the prefix of your Nukem may be different to mine, but will always be some variation of the Nukem. To get our very own Nukem, we first need to go to our nearest fast travel station and head to a location known as the Dust. Once you load into the area, open up your map and scroll to the top left. Within the red circle, we will be fighting the enemy known as the Black Queen. Now, there is two ways to gain access to the Black Queen. You can either first get to the dust by just naturally playing through the campaign, or you can go to the dust as soon as you unlock Three Horns Divide. Though, if you do the Three Horns Divide route, you will not have fast travel stations in the dust, so I recommend just going there naturally throughout playing the campaign. And that's it! No fancy quests or anything that you have to do in order to get her to spawn in, you just have to unlock the dust. Though there is a small catch where the Black Queen unfortunately only has a 33.3% chance at spawning in. Now, the Black Queen is a red HP health bar spider ant type enemy, which means fire items will be extremely effective against her, and has a 10% chance at dropping you the Nukem. Now, there is two other ways you can farm this item, that being the Digi Black Queen from the Raid on Digistruct Peak, which has two Black Queens spawn in at the same time, both having a 10% chance at dropping you the Nukem, as well as being able to farm this weapon from the Torg machines from the Torg Campaign Carnage DLC. Now, if I had to make any recommendations on how to farm this item, I highly recommend if you have the DLC Torg's Campaign of Carnage, farm this item through the vending machines. It'll save you so much time and brain cells, and you don't have to worry about that 33% chance of her spawning in in the base game, or having to run through the Digistruck peak and potentially failing to get that double chance at the Black Queens. So, the closest non-unique item in the game to the Legendary Nukem is going to be a Purple Torque Rocket Launcher with matching parts and prefix, and although our Legendary variant has a lot more overall damage compared to its Purple counterpart, it does have superior fire rate and that extra shot in the magazine. Now the thing that's really going to give the Nukem the edge over its purple counterpart is going to be its unique legendary projectile, which is going to give its rockets an insane explosive radius. Now, as you can see when firing this weapon, this thing shoots mini nukes, so if you're a follow-up player, you'll probably really like this weapon. And this is what also gives it its insane blast radius. Another thing to note, this gun has very heavy rockets, so they arc really hard. So they're not going to shoot straight like normal rocket launchers. So that's something you're going to have to get used to when using them. Another thing to note too is if you're not careful, it is very easy to blow yourself up with this weapon. So since now we understand how this weapon functions and acts, let's break down the damage. As usual, I have the three main damage variants. A weapon for slagging when we go into that segment. A sham shield for survivability. A slag grenade. A damage relic. I have no skills, and my badass bar is disabled. So, as we can see, damage is pretty similar between all three, so let's try one more time with Slag. So before we move on and break down the god roll for this gun, I want to quickly explain why the reload prefix is better than the damage and rate of fire prefix, and that is because although in the first two shots, rate of fire and damage will beat reload, after those first two shots, because of that reload speed, we will always be able to get rockets off first and faster than the damage and the fire rate, making our total DPS much greater and we'll always be able to be a rocket ahead or two rockets ahead its other variants because of that reload speed. So now that we know the ins and outs of this weapon, let's break down the god roll. Now the first part we're going to be looking for is going to be the barrel. Thankfully, we don't really have to worry about it due to it being locked as the legendary Nukem barrel. This is what's going to give this weapon its unique projectile. Now the next part we're going to be looking for is going to be the accessory slash prefix. 
Now in the Newcomb's case, we're going to be looking for that reload speed. Now, by getting the reload speed, this is going to significantly increase how fast we can reload this weapon, which increases how often we can fire rockets and just further boosting our overall DPS with this weapon. Now, the next part we're going to be going after is going to be the grip. In this case, we're going to be looking for a torque grip. Now, this is going to give us a boost to our overall damage with a hit to our accuracy, reload speed and recoil. Now, on paper, this sounds kind of bad, but in reality, the only downside is reload speed because you're not going to notice the accuracy in the recoil on a rocket launcher. Now, the next part we're going to be looking for is going to be the exhaust. In this case, we want a Vladoff exhaust. This is going to give us a bump up to our rate of fire, which is going to allow us to get that second shot off much faster, increasing our overall DPS. The next and final part we're going to be going after is going to be the scope. Now, in this case, we are going to be looking for a TDR scope. And now we want the TDR scope because it's going to give us a plus to our reload speed, which means more rockets more often, as well as the fact is it's going to help nullify that negative reload speed that the Tor Grip gave us. So before we move on to the last bit of this video, I just want to compare and show you the God Roll Nukem to a just generic all Torg no prefix Nukem. And you can see that although the all Torg no prefix has that little bit more damage you can see that our fire rates better our reload time is going to be better so we're going to constantly be pumping out way more damage way more consistently with this god roll compared to just a generic roll and you'll really notice the difference between even though it's just a slight rate of fire boost it's just such less of a delay and it's just going to feel so much better than just a generic all torque no prefix so that's basically going to do it for me when it comes to covering this weapon. As usual, I always try and show these items off in their most bare bones state so you as a player can determine whether or not it is worth going after on your character. Um, if I had to make any recommendations, I would say Krieg and Axton. They have several skills and abilities that allow you to just increase the damage, magazine size, just do crazy things with it. Uh, this thing is also really fun if you use the grog nozzle and get the drunk effect and you shoot like seven nukes out at once. Now, this thing's not the greatest rocket launcher in the game. There's definitely far better, but it's also not the worst. You can have a lot of fun with this thing. You can make some really uh, cool builds and just basically scorch the earth with this thing. Uh, if, if you have the right setup, especially if you're using that grog nozzle, like I said. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. I hope you're all having a great day and I'll see you all next time, Vault Hunters.